You know, I don't drink wine, but I sure like making it. Hey gamers, today we're going to review the game Viticulture, and its expansion, Tuscany, and its mini expansion, The Moor's Visitors. Let's check it out. Now just to show you what these boards look like, if you just got the base game Viticulture, you're going to have just a nice little smooth easy board like so, which is divided into summer and winter time. And that's how it's divided, very simple. If you were to get the Tuscany expansion, the game expands a little bit more. Instead of having just two seasons, you're going to have all four seasons. Let me see if I can get this out here. There it is. You're going to be working. It's a lot bigger as you can see here and I'm going to back away the camera there so you can see it. But it is a lot bigger and it's going to celebrate uh, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Of course you see the point tracks a little bit more bigger. Same amount of stacks of cards out here. Something special here I'll get to in a minute. And then there's one extra level you can play which is the same four seasons, but it adds buildings. Now this is the one that I'm going to be showing you today. So let me set this up and I'll tell you all about it. This is what setup for the game looks like here. As you see, I place an extra man here where the token indicated. I place the grape tokens here where they're indicated. I also have my player board ready. I have my three fields here, three field cards here that will come into the game. I also have my pieces ready to the board. My little cork icon goes on the point tracker here. My little wine icon uh, token here will go on the uh, income tracker here. And then of course I have a little rooster that will tell me when I am waking up and what I am going to get to do. Uh, also, if you do have the expansions for Tuscany, you will have two uh, special workers out here and it will give you these gray little tokens signifying who is who and it doesn't matter which one you want. So I can say this person is the merchant and this person is the messenger. Now this is going to, when you train and maybe you want to hire one of these people, instead of gra grabbing one of your regular workers, this is going to replace one of your regular workers. And these are basically just workers with special abilities, which I'll get to later. Now to start the game off, you're going to be, everyone's going to be given a mama and a papa card. And the mama and the papa cards are going to tell you what you start off with. So for instance, the mama player says, hey, you're going to get two workers and these types of cards. As you see, they're color-coded. Uh, these are vines, these are summer customers, these are wine orders, these are winter customers, and these are buildings. And so the mama left me one vine card and two winter cards. So I would take those cards from the deck and of course add two workers to my worker pool. Now what my papa gave me is a big worker. Uh, the big uh, ombre guy. Uh, he is really awesome in the game, and uh, you definitely will want to use him later on. I'll tell you why in a minute. But you're always going to get you're always going to get two workers from Mama and the big dude, big worker from Papa. And of course, he also gives you three coins. And of course, you would get coins uh, from the stack of coins here. Mine are metal, but they come in one, two, or five. They do. The game does come with regular nice cardboard coins. If you want to upgrade though and get the metal coins. They clink. Anyway, so you would grab the adjacent coins. So he said three, so I get three coins. And then I have a choice. And the Papa card always gives you a choice. It'll give you one of the buildings for free, or it'll give you more money if you feel like, no, nah, I don't want that building right now. So you can choose at that. Now, once you're done, these cards are just taken out of the game, and then you're ready to begin. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to decide who the first player is, and they're going to place their little rooster right here on the track board. And this will determine who goes first in the round. And the earlier you get up, you cannot go to number one unless you have the grapes, which are up here, which means you have to go dead last to grab the grapes, and then you could be on the number one spot. But I could go to number two and guarantee I'm the first person to move. Now, the later you get up, though, the more bonuses and the greater the bonuses you get pop up. So, for instance, if I'm on track two, 
When I move up into the summer round, this is spring, when I go to summer, I would get one coin. After that, I would get nothing. If I was number three, I'd get a vine coin when I was in the, a vine card when I was in the summer. I would get a summer customer when I'm in the fall, and I would get nothing in the winter. If I'm at four, I get a wine order in one season, then summer customer, then I get a building card. If I'm at five, I get my choice of either winter or summer customers. Then I get a winter customer. Then I get to place a star and placing stars here, which I'll talk about in a minute. Finally, if, if you're on the six, you get a victory point. That's really cool. So you'd actually get to go up one. Or you, and then next you would get a winter customer and then you would get to age your grapes, which I'll talk about later on. Finally, if you're going last, you would actually get an extra worker when it comes to the summer that you can place anywhere on the board. Then you can get a card of any of your choice. And then finally, you would get the grapes, which would let you automatically on your next turn shoot you to number one. Now, at number one, if you see, there are no benefits, but you are going first and you can take some of the spaces because space is limited in these actions. So let's say second player went here. Uh, they just want to get a bunch of cards maybe or get a victory point. So that's how the rounds would go. So every round, I have a choice. I only have three workers, and once I place them, I'm done for the round. So here are my choices in springtime. What can I do? Well, one, I can go here, and I can grab a vine card from the deck. And vine cards are very cool. That's how I would plant them in my fields. These are my three fields. I have a number five, six, and seven. What this means, I can put five points, this is three points worth of grapes, but I can put up to five points worth of grapes here, six here, and seven here. So I need to be careful of where I want to plant grapes, because if I want to pull them out, I've got to get a yoke for that, which I'll talk about later. But anyway, as you see, this is a Merlot, it's a three, but it requires irrigation. Now, some of these cards require nothing, like this one. It doesn't require any buildings to be built. Some of them require a terrace to be built, and there it is there. And some of them require both the irrigation and the terrace to be built. So there's a lot of things that you're going to have to be uh, uh, looking at building, either a trellis or a uh, irrigation or both, to be planting certain grapes. So in this case, of course, you know, my papa actually gave me an irrigation, so maybe I should have gone with the irrigation one there. Uh, but I would pick, I would get my grape card if I went here. Now, uh, depending on the number of players, spaces are limited. So as you can see here in a four-player game, I can only put three spaces there, a uh, three or four-player game. If it's a two-player game, I only get to put one space there, you know, or a three-player game, only two of these spaces. Now you see some of the spaces always come with a little bonus action. What that bonus action does, if I was the first one to place here, I could get two vine cards. And next action, I could go over here and give a tour. Giving a tour just gives me extra money. It gives me two dollars if I give a tour of my uh, uh, vineyard. But if I stood here on this token here, I would actually get plus one, so I get three coin. Here, I can build a structure. And if I get a coin right here, that means I get a minus one. And here, there are several structures you can build on your property. Now, I already talked about the irrigation. Uh, that's going to help you plant grapes. But there are other things you can build. The trellis, which will also help you plant uh, types, any type of grape. And then you have things like the windmill. Uh, planting a windmill, building a windmill on your system will actually help you. Every time you plant uh, that round, you get one victory point if you have the windmill. Now, you can only take advantage of that once, meaning if you planted twice, if you did this action twice somehow, uh, you wouldn't get two victory points. You only get one per round, but that can really help you out and accelerate your victory points. Here, I could build a cottage, and what a cottage will do, it will let me gain either a summer or winter customer card in my hand uh, every fall. So when I get to the fall season, I get to choose which kind of customers I get. Now these fall and winter customers do different things, have different powers that I'll talk about in a moment. Another thing I can build is a yoke, and I talked about this. Uh, I build the yoke, and that means if I had planted some cards here, but I didn't want them, let's say I had so many reds, I need more, more white gra grapes, then I, with, by using the yoke, I could place a worker right there in the little area provided, and I could pull up one of my grapes, uproot it, and throw it away, and that way next time when I go to plant, I can plant some new grapes in there. But to do that, you got to have the yoke. Another thing I can get is a wine table, a tasting room here. If I get this tasting room and put it up, every time I give a tour, well, once per uh, round, 
I would get a victory point. So if you're going to be given a lot of tours and you have some wine, you have to have some wine in your cellar, of course. And if you have this, it's going to gain you a victory point each time you do it. So that's really cool. And then other things I can build is my extra cellars. I can get, uh, you always start off with a small cellar, which can have these types of wines, a level one through three. But if you need higher levels or to make blush wines or sparkling wines, which the game shows you, uh, to make a blush wine is a red plus a white combined. And to make a sparkling is a white plus two reds. But if you, you need to have these storage cellars built. So for instance, I would have to open up the medium cellar if I wanted to get any wines to get them to age this much or to make blush wines. And I would need the large cellar if I wanted to age them even further or make sparkling wine. So th those are the buildings that you can build on your own player board. Each player has the same buildings and they do the same things. But you have to go here or there's another structure here that does the same thing that lets you build another structure. But that's the building structure thing. Finally, they have this one. You can place or move a star token here. And these are star tokens. And what they do, this comes in later on for points in the game. You place it in one of these areas on the map showing you have influence. You get that simple reward the first time you place it on there. So it could be a penny, it could be extra cards, could be money, whatever it is. And then at the end of the game, uh, everyone's going to be having their stars out on the board and whoever has the most stars in that area is actually going to win the victory points allotted to that country. So for instance, I got two, four, six victory points. Green has one, two. They didn't do that good of a job. But it says place or move. So if you wanted to, let's say green was here and I didn't want green to get those two victory points, I could move a star in there. As long as I move one star in there, we're tied, no one gets it. Maybe on the next turn, I could move another star in there and now I have uh, the, uh, basic, the most influence in that area and I will get those victory points at the end. This just counts for victory points at the end. It gives you a short reward up front, but then later on, can count big as you're going to end gameplay. So of course, if I place it here, I could place an additional star if I wanted to. Now, after you're done making any of your turns in springtime, and you don't even have to put a, a player there. If you don't want to put anything in spring, what you'll do is you'll move your little rooster up, claim whatever the prize is for that area, if there is one for that uh, season, and then wait for the, all the other players to complete their turns. Once all the other players in the summer round, then again it starts with the first player, and they get to choose what they want to do first. So let's say in the summer realm, what can I do? Well, one, I can play a summer card. Now these are the summer cards and they give you several different options and different special abilities, things you can do. Look, I can draw one and plant one up to my field or switch two of my green cards on my field without a yoke. I could just switch them around. That may be nice. Uh, so there's tons of little special abilities they can do on here, and they're really awesome cards. They're Summer Visitor cards. And if I played right here in the middle, I could play two of them. If I played here, I could play one of them, and then of course get a coin. If I go here, this is where I can plant some of those green cards that I got in the spring. And if I went here, I could plant two cards. But let's say I had that card, and I had the Merlot, and let's say I do have my irrigation. I could plant it in any one of these three fields, and that way when harvest time comes, I will be able to harvest some grapes. And of course, let's say if I had two, as you see here, this one's another three. It does require irrigation, which I have, but I couldn't plant it in this field because I can only have a total of five points. So if I wanted to plant two, I may want to plant them in the six field because that's three plus three is six. So anyway, that's planting them. Other things you can do, you can go and trade one for one. And any of this, and this is just a plus one on your trade if you get something. So I could trade in two cards and get three coins or one victory point or one grape or vice versa. Trade in a grape to get a victory point or a four, three coins and so on and so forth. So whatever you want to trade in, you can mix up and get different things. So the trading post is really helpful. You can also buy or sell one of your fields. And of course here, if you played it here, it'd give you a victory point. Here, determining on the number of players again, you probably won't be able to do them all if it's uh, like two players. You only place it once here. But then you could sell one and get one of the building cards. Now, how this works here is you, if you sold one of your fields, as you see, they're all worth a price, five, six, and seven. So what if I wanted to sell this? Maybe I needed some money really fast up front. I need a lot of money to finance and build some stuff. 
So I'd flip this over, sell it, it sold to the bank or whatever. I can't plant anything in there, and but I get those seven coins immediately. And that may be money I really need in the game. Now later on, I can come back to this very same spot, place it, and buy back my land for seven coins later on in the game. It's just a way to you to get quick money and kind of kickstart your turn in the game. Now, of course, when everyone's done, they will move to the fall session, collect any rewards they get, and then play will resume. Now, if you ever run out of call, if you ever run out of uh, these people before winter strikes, then your turn is just over. You'll move up the track and get whatever reward is there, if there is one, but your turn is over. You won't have any more moves yet. But let's just say I was just very conservative and I didn't play anyone those first two rounds, and now I want to play them in the uh, fall. What can I do? Well, I can go here and I can draw a wine order card, or here, and get two. And what these wine order cards are, is this is how you're going to get victory points and money income in the game. If I can get a two red wine and a four white wine, I can sell it to this customer, get three victory points, and get one coin every round. And so that's again why you need to have your medium seller and large seller opened up, because as you see, for my small seller, I can only go up to a three. So I would definitely, this would tell me, man, I need to buy that medium seller so I can make a four white wine so I can sell it later on in the game. But this is how you can get orders that can give you victory points and how you win the game. Uh, down here is how you harvest fields. Of course, here you can, a plus one means you can harvest two fields, or here you can just get an extra coin for harvesting a field. And if you play there, then you get to harvest any field. So here I have a three and a three. What I would do is I would take these little glass tokens and I would put them on my player board uh, in adjacent to how many grapes I have. So that was three whites, so I'd place it on the three there, and three red, so I'd place it right here on red. Now, if I already had a three red and a three white and I was pulling from this again, what I would do is I would take those little glass pieces and I would pop them down one below that, a two, and a two red. So once you get more and more grapes, you know, you may not have those spots open. You'll have to bump those grapes down and put them in the next one. Of course, if I had a 3, 2, 1 here, I really wouldn't want to grab from that because it wouldn't help me out. It would just eliminate one, push everything down, and wouldn't change anything. So you do want to keep that in mind when you're harvesting grapes. But you keep your grapes here on the player board once you harvest them. Now, other things you can do, you can make wine. It says make up to two wine tokens. Or, if you're right here, you can make up to three. So how do you make wine? Well, several different ways, of course. One, I can just take this three white and convert it into a three wine, and take this three red and convert it into a three red. Now, if I wanted to, I could also combine these into a blush, like I told you. So for instance, I have a three white, and let's say I combine it with this two red. Three plus two is five. So it would go right here under my five for blush wine, and this glass bobble would just go away. Now, if I wanted to do uh, Chris, uh, the uh, sparkling wine, of course, I need to have that large cellar opened up. But what I would do is I would add this one, three, and then these two reds, five, and so that makes eight, and it would go under eight for sparkling wine. So that's how you can make those. Now, that would just count as one wine token there, but let's just say I just did those two, and I left these here for later. So I made up to two wines. That's how you can make wine in the game. Also, another action in the fall is you can, once again, either b go here and you get a, a coin here if you place it here, but you can either give another tour of your vineyard and get money, or you can use this to build an additional structure if you really need one. After that, players go into the winter round, collect any rewards they get. In the winter round, they can go up here and they can play, it's almost like the summer card. They can get a coin if they play it here, or they can play two winter cards if they play it here. And winter cards are just like summer cards, except they help you do other special abilities probably during the later on in the season here. So the winter cards, always fun to play. Here is very important because you can pay $4 and train an extra man. This is how you can get extra workers in the game. And if you place it here, you get a dollar discount. So if I was to do this, pay my four, and I would get an extra man. I'd place him here on the board. He couldn't be placed yet. He would be in my game on the next round. I would actually collect him off the board, and I'd actually have four now. I would have these guys. 
and the big honcho, the ombre here. Uh, but anyway, that's how it works. Now you can also get one of these special. Instead of getting a regular uh, worker, I can get one of these special workers, a merchant or a messenger. Every person has those meeples of their, their color. So this would represent the merchant and this would represent the messenger. And if I wanted to hire one of them or train one of them, I could, and I just put them on the board like that. And of course they would go into my hand at the end of the next round. Also, there is a place where you can sell wine. <laughs> you just need to make victory points. Maybe someone already took the spot where they filled wine orders and you just want to sell wine. Well, you can sell a red or a white wine for a one victory point. You can sell a blush wine for two victory points. Or you can sell some sparkling wine for four victory points. So this may be a place to go. And of course, if you place it here, you'll get a building card. If you place it here, you can also place a star back over here on this map, which count for points at the end of the game. Now, the other spot right here is for making wine. You can fill a wine order. If I play it in the middle, I actually get an additional victory point. So that means I could actually place this card and do, I need a four and a two. Now, let's say I already had a four white wine, which I do, but I had a three red wine. Do I need to get a two? No. As long as it's equal or greater than these numbers, I can fulfill the order with it. So I can fulfill it with a four and a three, fine. When I do that, a few things happen. First off, I go up three victory points, one, two, three. And then it says one penny on the track. So what I do is I take my little wine token and I put them right here on the one. That tells me every round, at the start of every round, I will get some income. I will get one penny. And as you see, it can keep moving around the board where you can get two, three, four, and the max is five coins. So the max you can get in, in the game per round is five coins. So after a while, that money can be coming in and really helping out your business, your vineyard, as you're filling orders. It's a big reason of how you win the game. Finally, and this is an all space, that means it doesn't matter how many people you put there, Everyone can go here if they just don't have any other place to go. They can get a coin or they can get a building card. Now, let me talk about these building cards here. There are several different building cards in the uh, Tuscany expansion that you can do that can do special things. Look at this. If I have a school, I can train one worker for free and then I uh, may use that worker this year. Wow, I've never seen this card. I really want to play with this card here. Uh, the school would be awesome. So if I want to build it, it would cost me seven coins, and I would build it right here on my board. As you can see, I'm built up to two buildings here. Now how I would do that, I would have to use one of my workers and place them here, pay the money, and then place this card down. And of course here it has another little space. I could go down here and activate the card if I have the workers. And you can do that during a turn, during any of the seasons. So any of these buildings, and they're all really awesome. Look at this one. If you build a statue out there, it's nine coins. That's a lot, but it gives you a victory point every round. That is really cool. So a lot of the buildings can be really awesome in the game as well, and you may or may not want to build them. It just depends. Now you don't have to go on to build a structure to build it. These are special ones. All you have to do is go right here. You have to go down here too if you want to uh, dismantle one of them. Like let's say I had two buildings here and I, I got a better car and I want to build that one instead. Well, I have to place a person here, uh, uh, get rid of one, and then on my next turn, I could place someone here and rebuild it with a different building. Now let me tell you about this big guy here. The big ombre here, what does he do special? Well, he can go on spaces. Usually, like in a two-player game, if red player played their token here and they sold wine, man, that was the only space available in a two-player game. Now I can't sell wine unless I got the, uh, the grande worker. And if I got the grande worker, what I can do is I can go ahead and play on that space as well. There's no limit to how many grande workers I can put down here. So if I want to put a grande worker, boom and he can do the action. Now, of course, you only have one grande worker in the entire game, so you need to be careful on what action must you have, what is detrimental to your gameplay, because that's when you're going to bring in the big guy, the grande worker. But anyway, that's how a round is done. At the end of the round, you're going to do a few things. First off, you're going to age any grapes you have. So, for instance, I would age these grapes up one, and then you'd also age any wine you would have. So, my wine would go up one, and that would only go up one if I had that cellar open. For instance, if I didn't have the large cellar and these were both at six, they could not advance to seven until I build that larger cellar, and then both of them could advance. 
Uh, also, you're going to be restructuring it here, where if I went first, I could go again, unless this person grabbed the grapes, and they would go first, and the round would start again when players choose on what time they wake up. The game ends when someone gets here or crosses that area. Once that's over, you finish up the round, and then you decide how you add up any extra victory points. There could be some on your special buildings that you have. There could be some here in the area. And after that, whoever has the most victory points at the end wins. Also, there's a solo game that's offered. Uh, what you would do is you just shuffle these cards and then uh, try to achieve all the uh, all the things on the card within a lot of time. And that is Viticulture. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Folks, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? You know, I, I saw this game several times on and off. I thought, do I want that? Nah, it looks boring. Ah, do I want that? Nah, it looks too hard. It looks too difficult. Do I want that? <laughs> And then finally, after hemming and hawing over, I said, yes, you know what? I do want this. And I try it out and absolutely love this game. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. A million times I love it. Um, now, to be honest, I would never play the base game without Tuscany. You've got to get Tuscany. I, I usually don't say this. I usually say, hey, play the base game. It's fun. You'll play the base game. I played it once. Once. I played it once and I said, okay guys, now let's try it with Tuscany. And it was like, <gasps> and this was tons better. This makes the game awesome. Uh, like I said, the game's easier to learn with the base one. So if you want to get it, that's fine. But you're doing yourself a disservice if you do not have Tuscany. That's how good I think this is. Now, for the Moors Visitors expansion, I mean, you can get it if you want. Um, I got it because it's extra cards, extra winter and summer car visitors, and every time you have more cards in your deck, that's always good. It is not necessary as Tuscany. Okay, Tuscany is a must. This one is a maybe, if you have the time. Now, for the metal coins, uh, you can get the metal coins. Uh, I think they cost around 30 bucks. You don't have to have them. The little cardboard uh, coins they give you are fine, but I just couldn't help it. I love the clink, clink, clink. And when you give it to your, and when you bring it out for friends and they start playing it, you're going to hear the clinking. They're going to go clink, clink, and it just makes them happy. It just makes you happy to have those metal coins. But they are extremely not necessary for the game's enjoyment. Tuscany is, though. You've got to get Tuscany. Uh, it's a great game. I love this game. Stonemire games are awesome people. When I got the game, one of my windmills had broken off. I was like, oh no. And so I emailed them. No problem. They shipped it right out to me. It came just a few days later. It was really quick too. So uh, the company is really top notch too. Gamers, I've got to say, I've got to, uh, I've got to say, this is a great game. All right. Great game. Two thumbs up. You got to get it. That's all the time I have for now. Until next time, grape on.